Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you how some of our local species of paper wasps are beginning to engage in nesting behavior. We're also going to show you how we rescue a few wasps who are stuck inside the barn windows so they wouldn't dehydrate and die in there. Uh, we'd let them out so they can go out and continue their nest building activities. This time of year, we get a lot of wasps, like you see here, Polistes fuscatus, engaging in pre-nesting behavior. They'll go underneath the eaves of the barn here, and they will begin to kind of walk around in circles and congregate in certain areas where they believe maybe a good place for a nest has been found. So if you see this, you want to really encourage that to happen. Like all wasps, those that you see here are really beneficial insects for the entire ecosystem locally. They're the best biological control agent in existence to keep other insect populations under control. Without wasps, all our pest insect populations would explode out of control. In this clip, you see a Polistes dominula. This is the European paper wasp. It's considered invasive in North America. However, it's still a great biological control agent that keeps pest insects under control. They're helpful pollinators, and they're also an excellent species to collect for venom immunotherapy, or VIT. So when we find these lately, what we do is let them continue their nest building activities. Here you see a Polistes metricus, or metric paper wasp, and she's engaging in pre-nesting behavior. And it looks like she's going to maybe consider building a nest right here. Once they decide that they'd like to build in a particular area, what you'll see them do is begin collecting wood pulp. And they will attach kind of a glue-like substance that they create with their wood pulp and with their saliva to the roof of the eaves of the barn here. And then she'll start constructing a single cell. And once that cell is made, she'll lay an egg in it. And we'll show you what that looks like at the end of this video. Here you see a little bit of nesting material already attached to the barn. That could be from a previous season or it could be her work as she makes a foundation for a new nest. She appears to be a healthy foundress or queen who probably mated last season in the fall and then hibernated over the winter. And now she's prepared to begin her spring nest and we hope she'll do that right here. This is one of our good friend species here in the area. We love to see the Metricus wasp. They're a native pollinator. They're a native beneficial biocontrol agent. So we always are very pleased to see these around. They're also under pretty heavy competition right now with the invasive paper wasp, the European paper wasp. We're not quite sure how that's going to affect their survival rate in the wild, so we wish them well this season. In this next clip, you see a little birdhouse we installed up underneath the barn eaves, hoping to get some wasps to come and roost in there. And sure enough, we see a little resident there already. This is a Polistes fuscatus, a very beneficial paper wasp here in the area. The next day here on April 10th, we see another Polistes fuscatus engaging in pre-nesting behavior. Looks like she's scouting out a nest up here in the corner of the eaves. And she found a good little place to hide out from any of the cold, rainy weather here we've had off and on. And at some point, we'll probably see her build a nest up in this corner. And with any luck, she'll have a good, successful run of it here in 2024. The Fuscatus wasp, or the northern paper wasp, as they're also known, are one of our favorite species here. They're just a really, really good local wasp to have in the ecosystem. Good beneficial native insect here. So if you see any like this around your area, make sure you encourage them to nest. Here we're just checking inside the barn to rescue any wasps we find trapped in the windows. And here's another beneficial metricus. We definitely want to help her get out of here so she can go and explore the area and find a good place to build her nest. Typically all you need is some type of container with a cap on it. Just make sure the container is clean and won't contaminate the wasp with anything. We use a lot of uh, recycled food packaging. It's free and available and easy to work with. Once you have her contained against the glass, you just cap it up and she's captured. You just want to be careful not to cut their legs or their wings while you're capping it. If they've been in there for a while, they may be a little lethargic. Uh, it's never a bad idea to give them a little food and water before you release them. So she's been trapped for a while. So let's get her a little honey. See if we can get her to eat a little bit. She's probably dehydrated and needs some food. And we have a honey stick inside the container for her. Hopefully she'll find that here in a minute. After just a minute here, she came down and took a little taste of the honey. It's a buckwheat honey, a very dark honey that we put on the stick. 
So we give her a little taste of that, give her some energy, and let her get back to her nest building activity out in the wild. She doesn't quite realize the top's off yet, but she'll figure it out in a minute. The next rescue on this day was a little carpenter bee. Uh, she was pretty well dehydrated. She really needed to get out of there, so we rescued her. These are great little native pollinators, so rescue them when you can. So we captured our native pollinator here, very beneficial carpenter bee. I'm gonna let her go outside now. Next we have a Polistes dominula. Looks pretty well dehydrated, needs to get out of there. So we'll capture her next. So here's the Dominula. She's pretty tiny. We're gonna let her go outside so she can start a colony locally and let that colony grow. And hopefully we can collect her for venom immunotherapy later on in the season. So we'll see if she wants a little taste of honey first before she goes on her way. Just in case she needs some food right away. Yeah, she definitely needed some food. This is buckwheat honey, that's why it's a little dark. But honey's always a good carbohydrate food for wasps. Yeah, she was hungry, all right. Nothing like a little taste of honey for energy. All right, go to the light there, young lady. Come on, you're free. Yeah, she wants honey for now. Here she goes. The next rescue was another Polistes fuscatus, trapped in the barn window. Uh, so she was our next capture and release. All right, so here we have Polistes fuscatus. Let's bring her out. So, as you can see, she's ready to get out of there. So we're just going to bring her over here. She's in here with a honey stick. We'll see if she wants a little honey before she leaves. So they naturally climb up toward the light. So if we put our honey stick up here on the top, uh, she'll eventually climb up there and try to perch on that area. And she'll hopefully take a little taste of honey before she takes off. Here she goes. Yeah, she found it. Now she's like, oh wow, there's food in here. Awesome. So now she's eating some of the honey. That's right, you get some energy, and we'll let you go. So the end of the stick is covered in buckwheat honey. It allows her to get some energy before we set her free in the wild because she's probably dehydrated and hungry. Like most of them are that we rescue from the barn windows every season. So we've opened up the top. Now she just climb out whenever she's ready. Sometimes it takes one minute to realize they're free. But in the meantime, she's still interested in some of that honey. There she goes. All right. This is an old plastic storage bin on the outside of the property. We're gonna show you a common place 
it was too late to begin this right here underneath this lid very well protected it's dark you have good access in and out and as you can see here there's a tiny little cell being built on her nest and she has a co-foundress there so one is dominant one is more submissive and more of a worker helper so they're in the process of making a nest here this is a brand new one cell nest it's the way they always begin you can see there's already an egg placed in that one cell and what will happen here is that one egg will hatch into the first worker in the meantime the foundress will work on more cells and she'll deposit one egg in each of those cells and that'll be the first generation of workers born in the nest meanwhile the co-foundress and the foundress should help build the nest so we're going to go ahead and monitor this nest and we'll show you how it progresses but then eventually we're going to have to relocate this nest because obviously it's in a toy box and we don't want children interacting that closely with wasps. So we will have to relocate it. But for now, it's in a good, safe place and it can keep building over the next couple of weeks before the kids get out to play in the summertime. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for being here. Have a good one.